Hi there everyone, so in this video we're looking at the LAC operon um, and this is a length of DNA which is found in E. coli bacteria. So first of all let's think about what the purpose of, of is of this particular length of DNA, this LAC operon. Well here's our bacteria, here's our E. coli bacteria. Now this bacteria would usually use glucose as its respiratory substrate. So it would take glucose from the environment, take it into the cell and use the glucose. Um, however, sometimes there isn't any glucose present. And in this case, it would need to use something else. So if there's no glucose, but there is something else such as lactose, then the bacterial cell can use this lactose instead. So to do that, the bacteria has to take the lactose into the cell so it can use it. But in order to take it into the cell, um, the cell needs to have a transport protein and the lactose can then enter through the transport protein. This transport protein is called lactose permease. And if it's a, obviously it's a protein and therefore there is going to be a gene that is uh, transcribed and translated to produce that protein. And the gene for lactose, lactose permease is called LACY. Now once inside the cell we need to uh, break the lactose down. So lactose is a disaccharide so the cell needs to break it down. So this is an enzyme and the enzyme is going to hydrolyze the lactose into glucose and galactose. Okay so we've now hydrolyzed it into two monosaccharides and the cell can then use the glucose um, as its respiratory substrate. Now the enzyme that breaks down the lactose is called beta-galactosidase. It's also just known as lactase. But here we're going to call it beta-galactosidase and this enzyme is coded for by a LACZ gene. So both of these genes are found on what we call the LAC operon. So let's have a look at this in a bit more detail. So this length of DNA here contains our structural genes. Um, so if you haven't looked at the video about structural genes and also about uh, repressible and inducible enzymes, you might want to have a look at that. So the structural genes in the LAC operon, as we've just seen, we've first of all got LACZ, we've got LACY, and there's also another gene called LACA. Now this uh, codes for a, um, an enzyme called transacetylase and we don't really need to know anything about that it's just also involved in this whole process but you don't need to know the specifics of what that um, the enzyme uh, linked to lag A we don't need to know what that does now we underline them all that's just convention to show that it is a gene now the other things we've got here we've got something called an operator and this is basically the switch. So this is how um, the genes can be turned on, so they are expressed, or turned off, so they're not expressed. Um, and then we've got something called the promoter. So all of these parts here, the promoter, the operator, and all of these structural genes, they are part of this thing called the operon. And because we're talking about genes to involved with lactose, um, and they are all LAC genes, we call it the LAC operon. But um, bacteria, all bacteria will have lots of different operons. It's basically just um, a group of structural genes which are linked together so that they can all be transcribed at once. So in this case, the operator, here, which is like our switch, if this is on, then all of these genes will be transcribed. So one switch controls this transcription for all of the genes at once. Okay, let's think now then about um, how the transcription of this operon is regulated. So how is it turned on and off? Okay, so the promoter has got a region, it's, it's a region where uh, RNA polymerase will bind. So here, this is RNA polymerase, and when it binds to the promoter, then the transcription will occur. We've also got our operator. Now our operator is our switch. 
this is where the repressor protein can bind. So this is our repressor pro protein. So when the repressor protein is bound to our operator, that basically is like turning the switch off and it means transcription cannot happen because if you look here, you can see that the promoter binding region is being blocked. Now, if we've got a repressive protein, that means we need a gene to code for it. So that's what our regulatory gene does. This regulatory gene will code for the, uh, the repressive protein. And again, as we've seen in, a prev seen in a previous video, this regulatory gene is some distance away from the structural genes. So this is not part of the operon itself. OK, so here's our RNA polymerase. And at the moment, we can see as I've said, that the repressor protein is blocking the binding site in the promoter. So RNA polymerase is unable to bind and transcription doesn't take place. Now, we know that this is an example of an inducible, um, of inducible enzymes, inducible proteins. So these genes here, um, they will only be transcribed if they are induced by the presence of something else. If there is lactase in the environment, now lactase is the substrate, lactase will bind to the repressor protein. When that happens, it causes a change in the shape of the repressor protein. This means the repressor protein is no longer able to bind and it separates from the operator. So because lactase is present, uh, lactose, sorry, is present, lactose binds to the repressor protein, the repressor protein is now unable to bind to the operator. This means the RNA polymerase is able to bind to our pro promoter and that means that transcription takes place. So the presence of our substrate allows transcription to happen. So the presence of the substrate has induced transcription. So this lac operon is an example of where we see inducible enzymes. They are only produced when the gene is switched on and that only happens when the substrate of the enzyme is present. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much.